Hello uh, everyone, my name is uh, Shimon Martiniak, I'm a psychologist and today I will tell you a bit about uh, first psychological help. But first I will tell you a bit about uh, catastrophes and crit critical events, then we'll go to uh, various uh, models of um, first psychological help and then uh, finally I will also uh, tell you uh, what can you do, what kind of uh, useful uh, phrases, what kind of do's and don'ts uh, there are in, uh, in the first psychological aid. So let's start. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, unfortunately, as a matter of fact, mankind has been experiencing disasters from, from the beginning of our uh, human history. As civilization develops a number of uh, disasters, uh, uh, types and um, the population threatened by uh, various um, disasters uh, grows. Uh, in addition to natural disasters, there are technological, ecological, and communication disasters, various attacks, uh, acts of terror, cases of uh, planned uh, extermination, and wars. Uh, critical events uh, have a long lasting and deeply disruptive effects on people's mental functioning. They are a potential factor in the occurrence of various uh, psychopathological symptoms that go far beyond the scope of ordinary human suffering. Uh, and as we can see uh, now currently uh, during the war uh, in, in Ukraine, the more devastating and catastrophe in a person's uh, uh, life the more severe are the emotional and physiological uh, responses of uh, people. If you work as volunteers, uh, you will probably see, or you have seen already, how uh, this really um, difficult, tough situation impacts people, uh, impacts people who uh, have to flee uh, Ukraine, and other places in the world. And probably some of you are really well, well aware of how uh, catastrophes and critical events impact uh, mental health. A, a catastrophe is a sudden dramatic event that destroys basic human values such as life, health, shelter, and belongings. Uh, and it cannot be overcome by uh, already existing resources and action uh, strategies. So that's really difficult for people when they don't know how to cope with uh, new uh, critical events and catastrophes. And then the psychological uh, safety and mental health can be impacted. Maybe it's also good to actually uh, tell you um, about individual reactions to disasters, to critical events. So uh, there are many different ways to look at it, uh, but one of the um, ways to look at it uh, is uh, to divide um, such situations and disasters into five uh, phases. In the first phase, there's this emergence of shock, disorientation, uh, and kind of mental numbness. Uh, the essential feature of this is uh, that people do not actually uh, fully understand the event, what is really happening, and they kind of deny what is taking place because it is so difficult to to accept. And then in the uh, second phase, uh, people take automatic actions. So they try to adapt to the conditions of a disaster. Uh, then uh, the automatic actions, which are 
quite helpful at times. And then uh, they are really, uh, often they are poorly um, remembered and people are not really uh, well aware of how they really manage to, uh, to take, uh, to undertake these uh, automatic uh, actions. Then in the third uh, phase, um, people become convinced of the necessity to act and uh, undertake uh, purposeful actions with others. Uh, they participate uh, in, in various actions with uh, uh, others. They not only observe, but also do things and are more aware. And then in the fourth uh, phase, people uh, usually are more aware of their uh, feelings and what is really happening. And they feel uh, this kind of fatigue and weakness. Uh, they are just depleted of energy and other resources mm, and they are more and more aware of what is really happening, what kind of resources they have, what they can do. And then in, in the fifth in, in crucial phase, uh, there's this period of recovering and adapting to changes, uh, changes caused by the uh, critical events by the catastrophe they experienced. And people try to somehow, uh, with their own means and their own ways, reduce the effects of traumatic uh, experiences. And, and what, are the, what are the consequences of uh, critical events and su such, as, such uh, catastrophes as uh, wars, for example? Mm. The effects of surviving, surviving a catastrophe can be uh, presented as a syndrome consisting of many different uh, symptoms, really. Uh, the first uh, effect is this uh, fear of uh, death. So uh, recurring images of death and panic fear. Um, maybe sometimes the, the, the survivor, for example, the, refugee um, has this fear, this uh, fear that death uh, will reach him or her or uh, his or her family. And they can be also nightmares. Um, and also a lot of fear of uh, death or danger. And the second uh, effect is this feeling of guilt uh, over the experience. This kind of irrational feeling of the survivors that their life had been paid for by the death of other people. Sometimes this can be masked by anger or apathy, and this can reveal this fear of guilt over the experience. This can reveal, for example, in emotions and in dreams. The third effect and symptoms uh, and symptom is this mental dullness, apathy, withdrawal from oneself, depression, a kind of feeling of uh, half life, memory lapses. Uh, there can be a lot of confusion um, and lack of reaction to current events. Right? Somebody is uh, living the past more than the present. It, and other symptoms, uh, this can be a fear of falsehood in dealing with people, kind of unfocused anger, weakening of contacts with other people. Uh, at the same time, people experience this kind of need for love and support but uh, there can be also uh, hypersensitivity and envy, hostility and anger, difficult, difficult uh, situations, emotions, thoughts, behaviors. And uh, there's this uh, effect uh, and symptom that is search for new meaning. Uh, People see and, and feel that the old order of the world has been destroyed. And, and people feel forced 
or want to and search again for the new meaning uh, of, of future life. Really. So these are psychological consequences and effects of, of critical events. Uh, it's good to remember that uh, a crisis situation is actually a normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Uh, main emotions related to crisis of anxiety, fear, anger, and uh, sadness, uh, surprise are really normal. Mm, there can be this agitation, tension in the body. Uh, and these are natural responses to a threat. Of course, these emotion, emotions are really unpleasant, uh, but uh, every emotion helps us to, better, to, to, to be better prepared uh, for an action uh, and helps us to actually adjust to new reality because, for example, war uh, is, a, is a really threatening situation. Uh, it causes fear, anxiety, sadness, many difficult emotions. Uh, they are uh, adequate reactions, uh, adequate reactions to a really difficult situation as, as, as war. Mm, but what we should try to do is to uh, identify what emotion it is, what's behind this emotion, what is what it communicates to us. So difficult emotions are there and they are really normal and natural. It's just good to name them, uh, identify them and see what kind of needs uh, are behind these emotions. For example, fear can inform us that uh, we do not feel in control of the situation. Mm, it's also good to look at fear, at anger, and sadness, what they tell us. Right? Uh, when the fear is too great, uh, it, it has much influence on our actions and it can cause uh, impulsive actions, which sometimes can be dangerous if we are impulsive. Uh, there can be uh, some uh, maladaptive attempts to regain a sense, a sense of control. Uh, these attempts can be, for example, uh, uh, excessive viewing of, of, of the news. Uh, even uh, as we saw during the pandemic as well, like stopping gasoline or, or toilet paper, this is a sign of uh, attempts to regain a sense of control. So some, some emotions for sure lead us to search um, uh, uh, maladaptive attempts. Sometimes, of course, they are very adaptive, but uh, if it's too much of anything, this is uh, usually maladaptive uh, attempt to regain control. Okay. We should uh, name emotions. Uh, it always uh, helps us to deal with them. Uh, so once we identify them, uh, once we know what they are about, we can take appropriate uh, actions. Uh, if we feel uh, anxious or uh, sad, uh, or um, we feel other difficult emotions, and we know what they are about, we can talk about them and see if we have enough resources to deal with you know, kind of challenges there are, uh, or we need some help from other people. Uh, if we den deny uh, our emotions or uh, use psychoactive substances, uh, alcohol, drugs, it's a short-term strategy. Sometimes it can be really uh, a short term solution to what we feel and how we cope with emotions. But these are 
usually energy consuming they are not good for your psyche and for your body and these are short-term uh, solutions and the emotions will return over time and it is crucial and be before we even start to uh, offer first psychological help to others we should first of all know how to take care of ourselves uh, in, in the current situation and if we want to look after other people's mental health we should take uh, care of ourselves our mental health first of all in the first place um, so what we should do we should take care of our emotional stabilization so name the emotions that you um, that you uh, experience uh, if you know what you feel you can name it uh, you can give yourself some space to actually experience it maybe to express it express it uh, by just maybe you know writing down what emotions you feel maybe telling other people what you feel it's always good to you know, identify it name it express it in a mm, safe uh, way uh, and, and give yourself really the, the right to, to experience uh, even difficult emotions. Find space and the way to uh, express them. Uh, crying is a form of, of, of emotional expression. Um, if you are sad and you feel the need to cry, uh, do it. Uh, express your emotions in, in this way. This is a healthy way if you if you cry. So uh, there are some cultural norms uh, who can cry, who cannot cry. But crying, if you feel sad, is, is a natural emotional response of your organism. If you uh, fear something if you feel um, uh, anxious take actions so uh, think what's behind these emotions uh, and is there really anything that you can realistically do to uh, maybe somehow influence these emotions if you feel sad this is about losing somebody or something maybe about your needs so if you feel sad you can think for example what kind of needs are not met or what kind of loss i uh, experienced so every emotion is about something maybe it's uh, sometimes it's a good idea to actually identify what are the needs what is the loss and you know when you feel ready when you feel that you can take uh, an action uh, to fulfill your needs, it's a good idea to actually check what kind of needs there are and what you can realistically do. Uh, if you uh, talk about it, talk about your uh, emotions and translate what you feel into words, uh, it helps you to ventilate emotions and uh, control level of your emotions. Uh, tough emotions uh, can be tough to be talked about, but if you do it, if you can name them uh, and share with other people uh, that you are sad, for example, it uh, helps you to um, manage your emotions. And sometimes when we want to offer a first psychological aid, uh, we can feel the urge to act impulsively, but uh, we should be aware that acting, acting impulsively is also you know, natural when it comes to our emotions. At the same time, when we feel that we act impulsively, we should be aware that uh, um, wasting our resources uh, impulsively is not a good idea. It's, uh, some, it's something that should be avoided. 
So if we spot it, uh, maybe it's good to actually look into our emotions, what's behind this uh, need to engage too much sometimes really, and to waste our resources and act impulsive, impulsively. Sometimes uh, we see that we have no influence or on, uh, well, on the reality, really. There's not uh, much we can do to change anything. And maybe the only way is to accept what you feel, that we are angry or we are sad. Or we feel we experience some really difficult emotions and actually giving ourselves uh, some space to experience these difficult emotions and accept that they are there and they are natural is really a good idea and something that we should do. And maybe talk with others about these emotions. Uh, do not force yourself to do difficult things, uh, set uh, uh, realistic expectations, don't focus on, on high productivity, on you know, being productive, effective, uh, and see what realistically you can do, what expectations do you have from yourself, from others, and what is realistic. Um, taking into consideration, uh, into consideration all, all emotions and your own resources. Uh, take care of yourself first. Uh, just like on an airplane first, you put your own mask and then children and other, um, and then you can uh, help your children and other children and other passengers. Um, uh, have time for yourself. To keep your um, and to keep your mental health, mental balance, um, just focus on what makes you feel better. Invest in your own resources, in yourself, uh, and see how how actually you can uh, take care of your emotions, of your resources, because without them you won't be able to give. Uh, first uh, or any really psychological uh, aid uh, to others. Uh, get involved in helping others if you feel the need um, in, in a form that is comfortable for you. Uh, help your own way. Um, don't, but 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 please don't take everything on on yourself. This should be be realistic. This should be uh, in a form that is comfortable for you, and that is possible for you. Um, I mean, both uh, emotionally uh, speaking, this should be within your uh, you know, kind of emotional capacity, and also when it comes to your resources, you know, realistically speaking. Uh, in difficult moments, um, settle in reality. So see what you see, what you uh, what you feel, what you hear. Uh, it it uh, breathing, for example, deeply helps you to actually um, kind of experience the reality, what you what you feel, what emotions you feel, what thoughts you have, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, so it, 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 it's also about your behaviors, and it all helps you to. Uh, see the reality, right? what, what is possible, what is not possible, how it, you can help the people that need uh, this first uh, psychological help. Uh, it's, it's a good idea to actually uh, control the inflow of information about now the current situation about the war. You should look for credible solutions uh, and take the actions that uh, that are doable, that, are, that, 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 that you want to do and can do. So uh, this is on one hand about your emotions, your thoughts, on the other hand about your resources, like time and money, because usually uh, if you are a volunteer, this is not a you know, paid job, 
this is something that you do usually after hours, after working hours. But uh, no matter your situation, you should always focus, first of all, on, on, on your resources or emotions in order to be able to help others. Sometimes uh, the help of uh, first psychological help offered by non-professionals is, is uh, crucial. But at the same time, you should be aware that if we need uh, professional help from a psychologist uh, or a psychiatrist from a doctor or a, psycho a psychotherapist, this is also a good idea to actually um, contact. Uh, for example, uh, mental health uh, helpline where I work. But there are also many uh, NGOs um, which uh, can help you if you uh, search for psychological help um, uh, for volunteers. Uh, there can be this instance in which um, uh, you are offered uh, psychological help uh, provided by uh, professionals as well. So sometimes uh, psychological help offered by non-professional is, is a really good um, uh, solution. And also you can and uh, as a volunteer, for example, you probably should also be able to offer a first psychological aid. But if you see that um, and first psychological help is not enough, you should always uh, link others with professional psychological support and also link yourself with um, with psychological uh, with psychological um, aid. Uh, provided by professionals as well. Um, what uh, you should pay attention to when you uh, want to offer first psychological help. So first of all, you should look at uh, serious losses. Uh, if people participated in a, in a threat, um, the longer the duration of, of uh, such influence of a kind of disaster, the longer the period uh, required to, uh, for, the, for the people to recover from, from, from um, these situations. Uh, you should all also uh, check for availability of institutional support. Maybe uh, also help a person to identify uh, their own resources if they have any relatives um, and social support. So you know, close, uh, close uh, people family, friends, acquaintances, help always to um, uh, adapt faster to new challenges. So uh, first of all, you know, see what the threat was, what the you know, difficult uh, situation was, how long it lasted, then try to figure out what kind of social support the person uh, has. Then uh, you can help a person to actually overcome uh, the struggles that they have by telling them that what they already uh, did was really uh, something that was really impressive and uh, that the person that experienced something difficult already has uh, this capacity to help themselves and to overcome some problems. Of course, you are there to help them, but the person um, that talks with you already has some resources and they are on a good, so to speak, pathway to overcome the struggles. Uh, of course, uh, emotions such as fear, anxiety um, are, are really difficult for everyone, but especially 
uh, for uh, children and uh, young uh, adults. Mm, maybe sometimes uh, they will need more time to actually uh, kind of manage the emotions, understand them. Uh, uh, and they will need more time and care from from, from their parents or guardians uh, to 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 regain a sense of uh, security really um, so this is crucial when you help uh, families and offer this first psychological help to families to uh, help both uh, parents uh, and children but being aware that uh, no, parents and close adults are with their children usually more time than we are, uh, it's a good idea to actually ed educate uh, the um, parents that uh, difficult, tough emotions are something normal, uh, maybe some kind of psychological education about emotions, the names of the emotions like, like uh, anxiety, fear, also happiness. Why not? Uh, there can be happiness uh, experienced by people who are in difficult situations sometimes. So, so helping people with naming emotions is always a good idea. Um, and now, uh, how to have supporting conversations. If you look at uh, this slide, uh, the supportive conversations model, the so-called three S's, see, uh, speak, uh, support, is about uh, knowledge, uh, courage, and skills. So in the first uh, S, uh, the C, uh, the knowledge, uh, we should prepare, we, we should be prepared, right? So uh, we should be prepared and look who can, um, who can be, uh, who, who can need uh, this kind of our first uh, psychological help, uh, who this person is, what can be their background, uh, potential emotions they experience, and difficult thoughts that they experience, um, and, and the needs, right? Sometimes we'll know what kind of needs uh, they can have. But then in the second phase, we should be courageous enough to speak, to, to ask the right questions, always um, and be, of course, gentle and ask people and respect their boundaries. But the, in, the, in the speak phase, uh, courage is crucial to ask the right questions. And then once we ask the right questions and receive the responses, uh, the answers will uh, uh, tell us what we can realistically do how we can support people. And this is both about skills and also this um, linking uh, capacity. So if we have enough knowledge and courage and skills, we should be able to uh, help and link people with the right, uh, with the right people, with the right organizations, with the right resources. So if we, uh, see if we uh, see what is the situation and we prepare if we speak and ask the right questions then we will able to uh, respond uh, uh, adequately and support with our skills with our knowledge and help uh, psychologically the people that uh, need our uh, psychological support if we look at the ABC of helping, uh, you will see that uh, there are many factors that can influence the effectiveness of our psychological um, aid. 
So first, um, first factor is um, asking the right questions. So uh, respecting boundaries, but also being prepared and seeing what the person is telling us. Uh, what's really the meaning of the question and is it uh, about resources, is it about uh, emotions, is it about difficult thoughts. So asking the right questions is crucial uh, in uh, first psychological help. Then if you uh, experience emotions, probably uh, the other person um, uh, also uh, experience uh, some emotions, usually some difficult emotions, and uh, you will see if they express them, uh, what is the way that they uh, communicate emotions. And this can be really crucial because uh, sadness, for example, can be about losing something, somebody. Uh, sadness, it can be also, this emotion can be also about uh, needs not being met. So uh, if, if, if you let the person express uh, emotions and uh, you will see if it's sadness or uh, anger, anger is about you know, uh, lack of control, um, then you will know even more about this person's uh, needs. So uh, asking the right questions and looking at responses, but also you know, giving the space to uh, giving a person uh, a space to express emotions is always a good idea because both if you combine the answers with uh, uh, emotional response, you will uh, know more what are the needs of this person. Don't advise. Um, if you are not asked, uh, don't uh, tell people what they should do, how, how they should think, how, how they should you know, react uh, emotionally. Don't advise. Just be present, ask the right questions, you know, help uh, people, and uh, analyze the answers and link the people that are in front of you with, with the, maybe it's about your, the knowledge you have, but sometimes it can be about linking them with the right resources, organizations, people, etc. So, ABC of helping uh, 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 give a space for emotional exp uh, expression of other people. Uh, you know, if, if you feel that somebody cries, uh, this uh, is this can be usually um, sadness. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes it can be happiness. But looking at emotional uh, expression and emotions of other people really can help uh, to identify uh, their uh, needs. And if, you, if, if the person tells you that they feel sad or they feel angry or they uh, feel um, helpless, uh, you can tell them that it's normal, that uh, that's normal, usual um, response to uh, difficult situations, so because emotions are normal, difficult, uh, tough emotions are uh, also normal. So if you tell the person that what they experience is really difficult, but at the same time uh, normal, this can really uh, help them. And if you have both the responses and the emotional expression, you can then uh, ask the right questions and, and identify uh, what they need. So the person can tell you what, what, what they need, but also uh, talking about uh, their own resources, what they all already have, and what, what they can do realistically, uh, if there's anything. This can also help um, this person. If you look at uh, psychological uh, first uh, aid, um, in this uh, rapid um, uh, model, then you will see that the first uh, part, uh, the R, is about uh, reflective uh, listening. Uh, the second uh, phase is assessment of needs. 
then some people uh, are really well aware of what they need. Some people are less aware of what they need. So if you look at the, the third uh, prioritize uh, phase, then uh, the person has um, many needs. It's, it's, it's good to um, talk with them and help them to prioritize the um, needs. Then it is uh, about intervention, so responding to, uh, to the needs of the person and the disposition phase. Uh, the goals of this uh, first psychological aid in the rapid uh, model, and the goal is to um, emotionally uh, respond to, to a crisis event and to the need of, of a person. And it also helps to stabilize uh, emotions, uh, identify emotions, name emotions, and it uh, helps uh, people to manage uh, uh, difficult emotions in, in uh, severe, difficult crisis situations. It also helps to activate social support network. It, it helps to uh, regain ab ability to act at the same time, it uh, influences the sense of security, agency, and in general, control over the situation. So in this uh, rapid uh, model, uh, the, the first, uh, the psychological first aid, uh, the uh, active listening uh, uh, phase uh, helps establishing relationships, uh, building atmosphere of, of security and trust. Uh, and if you use appropriate communication techniques, so you ask uh, respectful and attentive uh, questions, it, uh, it helps the person to be understood and also to uh, regain this uh, feeling of, of uh, in Ganesu, and, you know, feeling secure. Uh, in the assessment of needs, uh, uh, as I mentioned, this should be about uh, all also uh, the uh, re reality, what is realistic in the current uh, phase and what is not. And then the prioritization uh, phase help to, helps to uh, actually um, identify the most urgent needs. And uh, maybe sometimes it's, it's, it is about maybe only, only it's crucial, but it, it can be about emotional support. Maybe sometimes it is about uh, providing shelter or other kind of resources. Mm. But prioritization also helps kind of manage and name, identify emotions, and helps people to experience this emotional uh, relief. And uh, in general, it helps them improve their uh, functioning in this difficult situation. In the intervention uh, phase, uh, this should be about establishing a specific plan and action strategy, uh, maybe about giving direction to action to, to help this person to overcome a crisis. Um, so this kind of uh, intervention in, in this phase helps them to unstuck from difficult uh, emotions um, and somehow control kind of chaos they are experiencing. And the last phase in the rapid uh, model, so the D disposition phase is about completion of the intervention. Uh, on the one hand, this is about the emotions, so checking how he or she feels, what is happening to him or her. Maybe it will be about focusing on further professional help. 
asking to what extent it was so what you've provided as a non-professional uh, to what extent it, it, it has been helpful um, and also linking uh, this person with a specialist um, uh, to the right resources is, uh, is is advice so sometimes the this can be about linking them with uh, with legal and social spiritual um, um, support that they need. So this is the uh, rapid model. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the psychological first aid. Mm, and uh, to summarize really, uh, if you use the rapid model, so reflective listening, assessment of needs, uh, prioritization, intervention, and disposition, these five uh, phases. There are some uh, do's and don'ts uh, that, that we have to be uh, no, used uh, during the implementation of this rapid model. Uh, so the do's of uh, psychological first uh, aid. Uh, maybe really straightforward, but do uh, show respect, uh, watch carefully, do not disturb uh, an, an, a, a person, and ask simple, respectful questions and find out what kind of uh, help they need. Uh, be prepared. Uh, be prepared also that sometimes the people that are uh, in difficult situations, may may avoid you, or stay, uh, may, they they may won't uh, like to be close to you. But you should also be prepared that it's not that everyone in difficult situation will be open to talk about their emotions, uh, needs. So you also be should be prepared for that, and also. Uh, while asking simple respectful questions, you should speak calmly and be patient and, and, and ready to react uh, adequately. So uh, use simple specific terms, sentences, uh, don't use abbreviations, speak slowly. Um, also quite useful uh, um, in the first, uh, in the psychological first aid is to show people their strengths recognize positive qualities, uh, what the person has already done, uh, because they, they've done a lot. They uh, got there where they are, and uh, they talk with you. Uh, and also, it empowers them. If you tell somebody that they already have a lot, many, many strengths, and they managed to achieve something, then this also enables them to act further and overcome challenges. Uh, prioritize, so as I mentioned, take care of most urgent needs. Uh, clarify uh, with them what is what, what can be done, what kind of resources you can provide, be it knowledge, be it uh, you know, addresses of institutions, but uh, clarify with them what, what uh, what are the priorities and agree with them? What is the most important needs? So clarify it with them. Share helpful information, uh, provide accurate and um, uh, uh, provide accurate and age appropriate information for your audience. Uh, if you don't know something, tell people that you don't know something. If you know that you can find out, and tell them that you can find out uh, find out what what they need if you if if you if you uh, can. So these are the do's in the psychological first aid, and uh, some uh, don'ts. Uh, don't try to read mind of other people. Uh, asking respectful, uh, simple questions is always a good idea. Don't make assumptions. Uh, don't assume that everyone who uh, experienced war, for example, don't assume that everyone has kind of uh, trauma uh, or um, that they uh, you know, have any kind
kind of mental health uh, issues or don't try to diagnose them. Uh, and of course, don't quite straightforward. Really, but do not speak to survivors in a disrespectful manner. Don't patronize them. Mm. Do, do not focus on their helplessness, or weaknesses, mistakes, or disabilities. And don't assume that they need you. Sometimes uh, you are not the right person to to they, they some 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 refugees won't uh, feel the need to talk with you so that you should be also prepared for that uh, don't speculate and don't provide unconfirmed information and try to meet the most urgent needs mm. and useful and use some useful phrases. What are you afraid of? What do you feel most? What can you do about it? So this helps to identify the resources that the person has. Uh, what is the greatest, uh, the, the biggest problem and difficulty uh, currently for you? Uh, what do you fear? Uh, how real is this? Uh, Fear. So, so talking about emotions and trying to identify emotions is, is a good idea. So maybe it's also for non-professionals and for, for, for professionals as well. It's good to actually um, identify emotions and this kind of uh, psychological uh, training, psychological knowledge about emotions is crucial for both professionals, but also for non-professionals. So what are the names of emotions? And so you can talk with people and identify emotions, help them identify emotions is, is, uh, is a good idea. And so then you can ask what's the most difficult emotion, if I, um, emotion right now for you. Uh, and then if somebody tells you that they are sad, they're anxious, they, they feel they, they fear something, they worry, you can you know, talk about this emotion, but also the thoughts behind this emotion. So you can tell, tell them that it's quite normal. Every emotion is normal and natural. So uh, it's quite normal that they feel sad, for example, they lost somebody or something. And this can be quite helpful. If you also give mm, this person enough space to experience the emotions and, and what's behind, what thoughts are behind these emotions, this can be really, be really help, help, help. Uh, Also finding uh, and, and strengthening uh, resources that the person already has. Mm, so you, you can ask questions if they experience something difficult, maybe like this, maybe similar in their past, how did they cope with this difficult situation? It can also help people to identify the resources. Uh, and in general, talking openly and asking the right questions um, can be helpful. Uh, and and um, helping people to identify emotions, but helping to identify the resources that they already have. So, for example, that they are, uh, you know, courageous, or that they uh, uh, manage to uh, contact people in a foreign country, that they uh, know how to ask questions in, in different in various uh, languages. So, pointing out the resources that people already have uh, combined with uh, talking about emotions and needs and linking the uh, people with the right resources people institutions uh, if you do at least one of these things you will be uh, helpful and, and and useful as a first uh, as a psychological first aider um, even if you are not professional your impact on, on mental health on, on um, how people feel in difficult situations can be really great. So 
if you uh, have any questions uh, uh, regarding uh, psychological first aid, uh, you can always uh, contact uh, me, Shalomatinek, or Mental Health uh, Helpline. But also, there are many NGOs which uh, focus on mental health, uh, on mental health for people who provide uh, psychological first aid, for example, for refugees. So if you look for, uh, on one hand, professionals who help uh, uh, with psychological first aid for refugees and for yourselves, for people who provide it, and on the other hand, you look for NGOs who focus on helping uh, psychologically, uh, and not only, but other resources, then I'm sure you will be a successful uh, psychological first aider. So I keep, keep my fingers crossed for you. Hope this webinar about uh, psychological first aid was useful for you. Thank you very much for your time and see you again. Bye-bye.